Hello everyone. A very good morning to all of you. I hope I am clearly visible and audible. Give me a minute to confirm whether I am clearly visible or, or audible or not. Just give me a minute to confirm it. So I hope I, it is working. So I welcome you all for today's session. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here and today I am here to teach you a topic from general pathology, a very important topic from general pathology. That is the basics of pathology, general pathology. I'm starting with cell adaptations. That is the first chapter in pathology, cell adaptation, cell injury and cell death. So there are three things which I have to teach you. Let me start with the first one that is cell adaptations. Now we know that in human body, there are three type of cells. What are the three type of cells in human body? Labile cells, stable cells and permanent cells. Before studying the various types of cell adaptation, cell injury and cell death, you should understand the various types of different types of cells. Labile cells, stable cell and permanent cell. Now, in human body, there are cells which constantly divide. There are some cells which constantly divide. For example, hematopoietic stem cells of the bone marrow, the mucosal cells, the epidermal cells of the skin. There are many cells which go on dividing, dividing, dividing the intestinal lining. They continuously divide. These cells are known as labile cells. The second type of the cells are stable cells. Actually, in postnatal life, in adult life, they do not divide. They do not divide normally. Normally, they do not divide. But they have an ability to divide. They have a capacity to divide if injury is done. So, here the stimulus is the injury. So, if, if, if the cell is getting injury, it, it can enter in the cell cycle and do the cell division. Right? As a response to injury. But there are some cells in human body. Here the stable cells, the examples are renal cells, hepatic cells, liver cells, right, pancreatic cells. In postnatal life, normally liver, kidney, pancreatic, these cells do not divide. We have a fixed size of liver. We have a fixed size of kidney. They do not divide. But in response to injury, they, they have the capacity to divide, right. And the third type of cells are the permanent cells. These are the cells in human body which do not divide at all. These are known as terminal cells. These are also known as terminal cells because they do not divide in all even after injury. Even after injury, they do not divide. They do not divide in response to injury also. So to only two cells in human body are examples of permanent cells. The heart cell that is cardiomyocytes and the brain cells that is the neuron. Only two type of cells are these. Now, they never entered the cell cycle. If you have studied the three type of cells, let me start the topic. You can see the theory written in front of you, the details given in front of you. Labile cells, which constantly regenerate from the stem cells, right? Like hematopoietic stem cells, skin cell, epithelial cell, duct cell, mucosal cells, stable cells. Normally, they do not divide, but they can divide as a response to injury. Like liver, pancreatic, kidney, mesenchymal, endothelial cells, permanent cells. These are terminal cells. These are non-proliferative in postnatal life. They do not respond to even to injury. They do not divide at all. So the two type of examples are neurons of the brain and cardiomyocytes of the heart. Have you got it? Now, can you see a cell cycle here? Can you all see a cell cycle here? Yes, you all can see a cell cycle here. So the various phases of the cell cycles are visible to you in this diagram. G1, S, G2, M. Now see the four type of cells, three type of cells. The first cells are uh, labile cells which are continuously dividing so they are in the cell cycle one of the phase g1s g2m one of the phase of the cell cycle the second type of cell are stable cells they are in quiescent phase that is they are in g0 they are out of cell cycle but at any point they can enter the cell cycle again as a response to injury and the third type of cells are permanent or terminal cells they are out of the cell cycle and they can never enter the cell cycle i hope the concept is clear to you so let me start the topic that is cell adaptations before starting cell adaptations let me tell you that all cells human body is made up of from head to toe just a second from head to toe human body is made up of organs all the organs are made up of cells cells are the structural and functional unit of life of course normally all cells are in homeostasis what do you mean by homeostasis homeostasis means god has given us many cells in many organs just suppose the cells of my brain are constantly doing the function of memorizing consciousness. The cells of my salivary gland are doing the function of secretion. The cell of my intestine are doing the function of absorption. So specific cells have specific function because of the specific structure. 
so specific cell have specific structure because of which it is performing special function the specific function brain cells of memorizing heart cells of pumping contracting relaxing cystol diastol salivary glands of secreting intestinal cells of absorbing so various cells are doing various function because of their specific structure they have specific function this is known as homeostasis so that is the meaning of homeostasis normally all cells are in homeostasis can you see in this diagram there is a cell so normal cell have can you see the peculiar structure of the cell so in the peculiar structure it is performing special function now if this is a cell in homeostasis if you are giving any injury to the cell any stress to the cell by stress i mean it can be physiological it can be pathological can someone of you give me example of physiological stress anyone who is listening me please tell me some example of physiological injury or physiological stress in human body physiological kya hota hai it is not a disease but it is not normal also it is neither normal nor a disease so for example say for example it is pregnancy is pregnancy a disease no it is not a disease but it is not normal condition also so pregnancy menstruation in females so these are the examples aging aging so these are the examples of physiological stress so whenever this cell is getting either physiological or pathological stress the cell will undergo physiological or pathological normally all cells are in homeostasis but whenever stress is given to the cell cell will do three things one by one just a second give me a minute okay whenever this is a cell you are giving a stress to the cell so cell will do three things one by one the first thing cell will do is cell adaptation in order to survive the cell will do adaptations there are five type of cell adaptations cell will do them one of them so it is hypertrophy hyperplasia atrophy metaplasia and dysplasia so i will explain you all five in this lecture so the first thing cell is doing is cell adaptation what actually the cell do in cell adaptation in cell adaptation cell will do some structural changes inside it it is a fixed structure now so cell will do some structural changes inside it so that it can overcome the stress and in order to survive and overcome the stress cell is doing that if the stress is continued stress is still continued the second thing cell is doing is reversible cell injury reversible cell injury cell will be injured and it is reversible still if you remove the st stress it can go to normal so the these two things are reversible and still if the stress is still continued the third and the last thing which will happen is irreversible cell injury the last thing which will happen is irreversible cell injury this is the other name given to cell death actually the cell will die actually cell will die and it is irreversible there are two ways by which the cell can die either apoptosis or necrosis so i will explain you the two type of cell death tomorrow's lecture so why there are two different types of cell death is there is any difference in the two type of cell death cell can either die by apoptosis also and cell can either die by necrosis also what is the basic difference between the two type of cell death in both of them the ultimately the cell is dying right now one is suicide and one is one is killing so i will explain you both not today but tomorrow but this one is irreversible what i mean i mean if you remove the stress if you remove remove the stress so this is reversible it will go to normal condition this is also reversible it will go to normal homeostasis of the cell but this one is irreversible once the cell death is occur you cannot make it alive again so this one is irreversible so in short in this i have to explain you three things one by one today's lecture i will explain you three things the cell adaptation number one reversible cell injury number two and irreversible cell injury that is cell death cell death i will teach you tomorrow the first two chapters i will teach you today these are three different chapters let me start with the first chapter cell adaptation uh, give me a thumbs up in the chat box those who are listening have you got it have you got it so the same thing is written in front of you normally all cells are in homeostasis but whenever any physiological or pathological stress is acting on it the cell will undergo adaptations adaptations which are reversible on the withdrawal of the stimulus which are reversible on withdrawal of the stress but if the stress persists stress is still persists the first thing it will undergo is reversible as cell injury if stress is still persists the last thing it will undergo is irreversible cell injury irreversible cell injury is the other name given to cell death it is the other name given to cell death and cell death is of two types of apoptosis and necrosis so i hope the concept is crystal clear to you uh, i must proceed ahead i must proceed ahead right now cell injury occurs when cells are no longer to adapt have you got it in this diagram also you can see whenever stress is coming whether physiological or pathological if stress is less 
the first thing it will undergo adaptation if stress is more and persists for a longer time the second thing it will undergo is injury initially reversible injury and later on irreversible cell injury irreversible cell injury is cell death right now there is a point of no return can you see point of no return this is a point of no return so before this if you remove the stress the things are reversible but after this point of no return even if you remove the stress it cannot be reversed that's 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 the meaning of point of no return it is cell death now cell is destined to die it has to die uske kismat mein death hi likha hai have you got it so there are three chapters so can i say the three things that is the first thing which is happening is cell adaptation the second thing which is happening is reversible cell injury and the third thing which is happening is irreversible cell injury so these three things are the spectrum of each other are the gradual spectrum of each other so first adaptation will take place usse kaam nahi chala to reversible cell injury or stress abhi bhi persist hai to irreversible cell injury or cell death so the three things are progressive the progressive form of each other have you got it the progressive so the same thing is written in front of you so cell adaptations reversible cell injury and irreversible cell injury that is cell death these are the stages of progressive impairment of cells normal function progressive one by one they will occur normal function and normal structure mein impairment is going on going on going on this one is reversible this one is also reversible but this one is irreversible as the name indicate so let i have to teach you three chapters have you have you got it chakravarti have you got it anyone else who's listening to me have you got it i have to teach you three chapters today so let me start with the first chapter cell adaptations the second chapter is reversible cell injury and the last one is irreversible cell injury death that is cell death the two types of cell death apoptosis and necrosis we will study them one by one like a story like a movie story in interesting way let me start the first chapter cell adaptations give me a thumbs up in the chat box are you ready for the cell adaptations so what is the definition of cell adaptation this is the definition given in robbins you can read the definition it is given in robbins you will see ma'am it is big it is complicated so always read all the definition from robbins by splitting them let me split so the same definition i have split it in four parts now you will be easily get it you will be so what are adaptations the first thing these are reversible once you remove the stress the cell will come to normal homeostasis again so the first thing it is reversible pehli baat to ye reversible hai dusri baat what are they actually what the cell is doing the cell is doing some structural changes in response to physiological stress or pathological stress so in response to stress physiological or pathological cell is actually doing some structural changes inside it why the cell is doing some structural changes to attend a new homeostasis stage stage initially the cell was in homeostasis but by giving stress you are disturbing the homeostasis cell want to go in homeostasis again that's why cell is cell is doing some structural changes in order to survive and continue to function uh listen this like a story listen normally how many hours you study daily uh, chakravarti abhirami priyanshi ihama how many hours so daily normal students study for 6 to 8 hours i hope you are also studying for 6 to 8 hours daily normally during normal circumstances so this is your homeostasis this is your example for example this is your homeostasis but now you have exams you have exams tomorrow any exams you are having so exam is your stress now exam is nothing it is not normal it is something abnormal it don't occurs daily right so whatever don't occurs daily is something abnormal now it is physiological or pathological you yourself divide, decide but exam is your stress so what will happen a day or few days before exam so exam is acting like a stress in order to overcome that you want to try in another homeostasis so this homeostasis is gone now it is disturbed now daily you will study for 10 to 12 hours so you will study for 10 to 10 12 hours before the day of the exam or few days before the day of the exam so you are doing some structural changes inside you right some structural changes in order to overcome the stress this is the stress you want to overcome it you want to overcome it and you want to by overcoming you want to survive if you don't want you don't do this you will you will fail in the exam but you do not want to fail you want to pass in the exam so you want to survive in order to that you are overcoming the stress by doing some structural modifications inside you now listen like this once the exams are over how many hours you will study again you will study till do you study for 10 to 12 hours even after the end of the exam no you will not do that again you will come back to your normal homeostasis so after the stress is removed again you will study for 6 to 8 hours daily so learn like this have you got it now you will never forget i hope 
you will never forget now. So learn the definition now. So this is the definition given in Robbins. Now everyone read it. What are adaptations? So adaptations are reversible. These are reversible. The first thing. These are the functional and structural responses in response to stress. The stress can be physiological. It can be pathological. So during this, a new altered homeostasis is achieved. A new, you have achieved a new homeostatic stage, stage right? You are studying for uh, many hours, right? Uh, so, you are studying uh, for uh, for 10 to 12 hours. And so, that this is your new homeostasis in order to survive and continue to function. You do not want to fail. In order to pass, you are doing that. So, that is the definition, right? So, Chakravati is saying zero hours. So, do you study zero hours Chakravati after exam? No, after exam, you should come to back to your normal homeostasis. It should not be zero it should be six to eight hours again normally right okay anyways let me proceed so can you see the same diagram can you see a cell the cell is in homeostasis can you see the stress this is the stress physiological or pathological stress acting on the cell right now see the first thing in order to survive and continue to function cell will adjust some structural changes inside it and that is known as cell adaptation but the most important thing these are reversible on removal of the stress once you remove the stress cell will again become normal. All adaptations are reversible. Definition is done. Now, what are the type of adaptations? There are five type of adaptations. What are they? Hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, metaplasia, dysplasia. What are they? So, the first thing is hypertrophy. The second is hyperplasia. The third is meta, metaplasia. The fourth is atrophy. And the fifth is dysplasia. Dysplasia. Now listen, listen, these are the five type of adaptations. Most of the students have confusion between hypertrophy and hyperplasia. Hyper means more. The word hyper means more. And the word A means less. A means less. Now listen, listen. Hyper means more. Hyper means more. And trophy means size. Plasia means more. And uh, hyper means more. Plasia means number. Right? Plasia. Trophy, I have already told you, it means size. It means size. So you yourself tell the definition. What are the three definitions? What are the three definitions? What is hypertrophy? Hypertrophy is increase in size of the cell. That is hypertrophy. Hyperplasia is increase in number in the cell. Atrophy is decrease in size of the cell. Give me a thumbs up. So increase in size of the cell. Cell is increasing its size in order to overcome the stress. Cell is increasing in number in order to overcome the stress. Cell is decreasing in size in order to overcome the stress. So, 5 se 3 to samaj mein aage. I will come on the rest of 2 one by one. Don't worry. Have you got it? Never forget the meaning of trophy and plasia. Trophy means size. It means size. And plasia means number. Plasia means number. It means number. Number. Number of the cell. Have you got it? So, hypertrophy or atrophy. The two trophies are there. And hyperplasia is there hyperplasia is there have you got it so that is the thing that is the thing if you got this let me proceed ahead the five type of dotations are over now see everyone see can 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 all of you see a cell this is a normal cell i'm marking with blue color this is a normal normal cell at the center right can you see in this diagram the cell is increasing in size so this one is the diagram of hypertrophy so it is the one cell only one cell only but the size is more right in this diagram one two three Instead of one, there is three cells. So, but the size of uh, size of all the cells is same as that of normal cell. So here it is increasing in number. That is known as hyperplasia. So please understand if increase in size is there, not number, not negative finding is also important. Not number. It is known as hypertrophy. If increase in number is there, it is known as hyperplasia. Right? See this diagram. You can see decrease in size as compared to normal cell. It is atrophy. Right, the three de definitions are done. Now, coming on the fourth and the fifth one. What is the fourth definition? Metaplasia. Now, in human body, there are two types of cells. Either squamous cell or columnar cells. If squamous cell get converted to columnar cell or vice versa, if columnar get converted to squamous, this is known as metaplasia. So, what is the definition of metaplasia? So, it is change or transformation of one type of mature epithelia into another mature epithelia. So, one type of mature epithelia is converting into another mature epithelia that is either squamous to columnar or columnar to squamous. It is known as metaplasia. So, what is the definition of metaplasia? You yourself tell, tell it is transformation or replacement of one adult type of cell with another adult type of cell. Give me a thumbs up. That is the fourth metaplasia. And the fifth and the last one is dysplasia. 
it is disordered development it is a precursor of neoplasia i will tell you in detail when i will teach you the details of all of them so there are basically you can see the diagram of metaplasia so either this is squamous changing into columnar or columnar changing into squamous and this one is dysplasia so the five type of cellular adaptations are in front of you give me a thumbs up now i request all of you to take a notebook to take a pen and draw this table with me i will explain you all five the details of all five one by one what are the five hyperplasia i will start with hyperplasia the first one then i will come on hypertrophy and atrophy the two trophy hypertrophy atrophy dono trophies pe aayenge first we will finish plasia then we will come on the two trophy hypertrophy means more atrophy means less increase in size decrease in size then we will come on metaplasia that is replacement or transformation and then in the end we will come on dysplasia in all of them i will tell you the definition i have already taught you the definition so i will repeat the definition i have already shown the diagram of all five together i will show you the diagrams again basically i will tell you the mechanism and examples the types and examples ye sabse important hai jispe maximum mcqs aate hain tumhare i don't know who students are listening my lecture whether you are preparing for your prof exam university exams of pathology of second prof mbbs so this is very 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 five star important question a long question five mark question can come or a short question on individual of them can come for three mark or two mark right and if you are preparing for neat pg fmg inict or next this is going to be a very really super important topic from which mcq will definitely come in your exam right so for all the exams whether competitive or university the topic is important so i request all the student to make this table right now it's your choice to give the suggestion is my part but to follow or not it's your choice let me start with the first one i'm starting with hyperplasia i'm starting with hyperplasia should i start are you people there should i go ahead let me see if i can see your chat just a second ha huh, i can see your chat i guess i can see now everyone give me a thumbs up should i start with hyperplasia as i have told you hyper means increase it means more and plasia means number so it is increase in number of the cell increase in number of the cell how cell will increase in number how any cell can increase in number priyanshi abhirami chakravarti how cells can increase in number by doing cell division by doing cell division the cell one cell will divide into two the two will divide in four four will divide in eight that is how they are increasing in number now at the beginning of the chapter i told you there are three type of cells labile cells number 1 stable cells number 2 and permanent or terminal cells number 3 now you you all guys those who are listening me live you tell me these three cells out of these three cells who will show hyperplasia or who will not show hyperplasia now common sense apply your common sense you know the three type of cells apply your common sense priyanshi abhirami chakravarti dhananjay uh, azmi anyone else who is missing i don't know the name of the others so please tell me that what i am asking to you please tell me please tell me so okay just a second write down in the chat box uh, what type of cells will show the cell uh, the, the hyperplasia type of cell adaptation and why what type and why anyone okay so the answer is that the answer is that it is labile and stable cells which can show hyperplasia but permanent or terminal cells do not show hyperplasia yes chakravarti permanent and terminal cells do not show hyperplasia why why because they cannot divide they cannot divide the labile and stable cell can divide labile cells divide continuously and stable cells can cannot divide normally but can divide as a response to injury but permanent and terminal cell cannot show cell division if they cannot show cell division they cannot increase in number so hyperplasia is shown by labile cells and stable cells yes dhananjay labile and stable priyanshi very good but not by permanent what are the two examples of permanent that is heart cell and brain cell heart me cardiomyocyte cells and brain me neurons these are the permanent cells so our heart and brain cell do not show hyperplasia so they show only hypertrophy they do not show hyperplasia you got it so see the definition of hyperplasia i am explaining you the first one that is hyperplasia see the definition what is the definition of hyperplasia it is increase in number of the cell not the size write down negative finding also along with positive finding write down negative finding also it is increase in number not the size of the cell it is shown by labile cell it is shown by stable cell but it is not shown by permanent cell because they cannot divide and labile and stable cell can divide right you got it 
so it is your mcq you can see the best diagram i have drawn for you can you see a normal cell this one is normal cell see the size see the number size or number number is one and see the size right whenever any stress is coming on it can you see the stress is coming the stress can be physiological or pathological it is showing the adaptation by increase in number see the size is same in super size same as compared to normal the size is same but the number instead of one there are nine so the number is increased so size is not increased number is increased that is hyperplasia so we are done with hyperplasia the definition is done the diagram is done after that come on the mechanism how actually the number is increased i would like to draw a diagram for you so can you see this is a cell this is a normal cell how does normal cells divide this is a normal cell with nucleus and dna how does they divide all normal cells have growth receptor on their surface the red color receptors on the cell membrane on the plasma membrane these are the growth receptors all normal cells have growth receptor on their surface right whenever growth factor come this is a growth factor and bind with the growth receptor then this cell get the stimulus that i have to divide and cell will do the cell division it will do the mitosis it will do the cell division and two cells are formed from one so in short cell division occurs when growth factor is coming and binding with the growth receptor normally it happens like this have you got it have you got it now just suppose this is a normal cell and stress is acting on it whenever you give stress to this cell so what as a response to stress what the cell will do cell will increase the number of growth receptor on its cell will increase the number of growth receptor on its initially 10 were present and now 100 are present growth receptor and cell will also increase growth factor growth factor so initially only 10 growth factors were coming now 100 are coming so there will be more cell division there will be more so cell is doing hyperplasia because of increase in number of growth receptor and growth factor that is the mechanism give me a thumbs up if you got the mechanism so the summary of mechanism is in front of you it is written by increasing the production of growth factor and growth factor receptor in dono ko increase karke cell is showing cell is showing hyperplasia everyone give me a thumbs up how i will know that you got it give me a thumbs up so that is the definition and that is the mechanism now come on the types hyperplasia is of two types physiological and pathological first give me a thumbs up hyperplasia is of two type physiological pathological can any one of you give me examples of physio i will i will give you three examples of physiological hyperplasia physiological means it is normal it is not a disease and i will give you three examples of pathological hyperplasia you have to learn six examples of hyperplasia three of physiological three of pathological can any one of you give me examples of physiological physiological examples any example do 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 you, you know you know or you don't know okay i will tell you one by one let me start with physiological example physiological hyperplasia yes yes breast chakravarti female breast i'm coming on that so see just suppose this is a diagram of female breast this is a diagram of female breast these are the cells of female breast these are the cells of female breast just a second okay okay just a second so this is a female breast let me draw it again and these are the cells of the female breast so see the size of the female breast because of the number of cells size of cells see the total size of the female breast but during three conditions what are the three conditions during puberty during puberty during pregnancy and after pregnancy the breast feeding that is lactation during lactation during pregnancy puberty and lactation the size of the female breast increases drastically the size the total size of the female breast increases drastically you can see now why the increase is occurring why the total size of the female breast increase initially whatever the number of cells were there counted the number of cells is increasing here by doing more and more and more cell division so there are more 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 cells so increase in number of the cells causing total size of the breast is increased now count the number of cells here and count the number of cells here see the size is same i am saying the same size of the cell the same size of the cell size is not changing number is changing so that is that is the best example of physiological hyperplasia right what is the stress here the stress here are the hormones the stress here are the hormones what hormones estrogen and progesterone so during puberty pregnancy and lactation it is estrogen and progesterone which is secreted more in female body that will go through the breast and acting as a stress for the breast 
in order to adopt the cell is doing increase in number the breast cells are showing increase in number so the size of the female breast increases during puberty pregnancy and lactation give me a thumbs up if you got the first example that is the first example that is the first example you got it coming on the second example now first example is female breast you know the stress the stress is the hormones the second example is uterus uterus in pregnancy uterus uterus ka myometrium now uterus have three layers you know female uterus so this is the uterus of the female the innermost layer is endometrium i am not interested in endometrium right now in this example the second layer is myometrium i am interested in myometrium and the outermost layer is serosa that is outermost layer is the serosa perimetrium or serosa so there are three layers in the endometrium this is a normal normal female uterus but during pregnancy to accommodate the fetus inside the uterus so we know the size of the uterus increases drastically the size of the uterus increases drastically to accommodate the fetus inside it to accommodate the fetus inside it right now have you ever thought why the size of the uterus is increasing drastically during pregnancy i'm i'm talking about pregnancy during pregnancy it is happening so the stress here is the pregnancy the hormones during the pregnancy why it is happening so see the number of the cells i will draw the cells again so see the number of the cells in myometrium count the number of cells here in the myometrium these are the myometrial cells right they all will show both hypertrophy also hyperplasia also so pregnant uterus is an example of both right here cell will increase in size as well as increase in number the myometrial cells so see they are increasing in size clear cut increase in size is shown and the number is also increased not only size so they increase in size as well as number because of which the size of the uterus increases so pregnant uterus is an example of both so only one example which comes under two things hypertrophy hyperplasia so that is the most important mcq which of the following is an example of both hypertrophy and hyperplasia physiological hypertrophy physiological hyperplasia so answer is pregnant uterus give me a thumbs up so the cells of the myometrium are increasing in number that is hypertrophy and they are increasing uh, hyperplasia and they are increasing in size that is hypertrophy give me a thumbs up come on that is the second example that is the second example now the third example coming on the third this is the uterus ka myometrium during pregnancy the third example is again uterus again uterus but this time not myometrium i am talking about endometrium of the uterus the innermost layer during menstruation now what happens during menstruation normally i will draw the diagram again so this is a female uterus the innermost layer is the endometrium this is the endometrium during this is endometrial layer now what happens during menstruation in normal female there is a menstruation every 28 days so what happens during men menstruation actually the uterus contract and this endothelial lining slough off that this endothelial cells slough slough off and they come in the form of the bleeding out of the female body vaginal bleeding they come in the form of the bleeding right so all the endometrial cells cells are sloughing they just slough off and came in the bleeding right few are still remaining mind my words few ikka dukka abhi bach gaye they are surviving they are remaining they are not sloughing off rest all are sloughed off the rest all are sloughed off now the one which are remaining after menstruation after 3 4 days or 5 days of menstruation after 3 4 5 days of menstruation the remaining one will do the cell division and they will regenerate the lining so the lining of the female uterus again got regenerated for the next month so regeneration is occurring by cell division cell division cell division from the surviving one the surviving one are doing cell division and regenerate the lining again so the example is regeneration of endometrial endometrial lining after menstruation after every menstruation the regeneration and after 28 days again it will be sloughed off then again it will be regenerated after 28 days it will be sloughed off give me a thumbs up if you got it so there are three examples of physiological hyperplasia it is written in front of you the breast female breast what is the stress stress is puberty pregnancy and lactation during which hormonal changes takes place estrogen and progesterone so size increases because of hyperplasia uterus ka myometrium during pregnancy only during pregnancy only so it increases in size because of hyperplasia as well as hypertrophy and uterus ka endometrium during menstruation so my point is that you should know the stress also so stress is puberty pregnancy lactation pregnancy or menstruation what is the stress what is the stress and how the organ you should know the organ how it is doing overcome it is overcoming the stress 
by increasing in number by increasing in number that is hyperplasia give me a thumbs up so that is the best way i can explain so the three examples of physiological hyperplasia all three are hormonal all three are examples of hormonal hormonal means estrogen and progesterone in female body all three are female examples in female body not in males so tell me the three example the female breast during puberty pregnancy and lactation the first example the uterus the myometrium of the uterus during pregnancy and the endometrium of the uterus after menstruation so uterus ki do example hai. so the three examples are in front of you what are the three examples of physiological physiological hyperplasia physiological hyperplasia the breast in female right uterus in female uterus in female uterus mein myometrium in female and uterus mein endometrium in female so tell me the stress in each of them who will tell me the stress in breast the stress is puberty pregnancy and lactation in uterus myometrium the stress is pregnancy and uterus endometrium the stress is menstruation i cannot super simplify than that in all these conditions the organ is showing hyperplasia and increase in size increase in number increase in number the cells are increasing in number because of which the organ is showing increase in size i hope you got my point so the physiological hyper now the best example here the diagram given in robins the same diagram which i have explained you is given in robins also see this is the uterus it is a normal uterus see the size a non pregnant uterus in any female see the size the non pregnant uterus in any female see the size it is normal and during pregnancy see the size increase this is a pregnant uterus see you yourself see the increase in size can you appreciate the increase in size this is the gross now cut this uterus and make a slide and cut this uterus and make a slide can you see the two slides are in front of you see the first slide this is a normal uterus and see the second slide this is a pregnant uterus you can see the two slides are in front of you okay what you have to appreciate here see the size of the cell here and the number of the cell here each cell and see the size and number of cells here so here you can notice the size is increased of each cell and the number of the total cells if you count total cells here and count the total cells here in the uterus they will increase so size and number both is increasing size increase means hypertrophy and number increase means i'm sorry number increase is hyperplasia so i mean pregnant uterus is an example of both everyone give me a thumbs up everyone so dhananjay is asking some question is the growth after partial resection is also the example of hyperplasia okay partial resection uh yeah compensatory resection definitely definitely dhananjay i am coming on this example in pathological hyperplasia wait a while i am coming on pathological hyperplasia you are absolutely right but this is not physiological i will i would like to take this example in pathological so we are done so here the same diagram of the breast is given which i have told you this is a normal breast and this is the breast during pregnancy see appreciate the change appreciate the increase in number have you got it now coming on the examples of pathological hyperplasia coming on the examples of pathological hyperplasia so the first example which i want to quote is skin warts skin may warts are there what are skin warts in the skin sometimes nodules are formed small small nodules can you appreciate small small nodules these are benign these are known as warts why they are formed why they are formed it is due to they are formed due to hyperplasia of the skin cells the skin cell focally here showing hyperplasia here also they are showing hyperplasia here also here also they are showing hyperplasia that's why small small nodules are formed and these are known as warts you will see ma'am why they are forming actually what is the stress you should know the stress for all condition the stress here is a virus the name of the virus is human papilloma virus hpv virus so whenever human papilloma virus come and enters inside skin cell it is acting as a stress in response to overcome the virus the skin cells are doing hyperplasia and forming small small nodules it is a disease it is not normal and the name of the disease is warts that's why i am taking it as a pathological example give me a, give me a thumbs up so the first example here it is written in front of you it is skin warts it is due to hyperplasia of the epidermis of the skin the epidermis of the skin is showing cell division in response to a virus the name of the virus is hpv virus so the stress here is hpv virus give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up that is hpv virus the second example i am giving is again endometrium of the uterus can you see a uterus endometrium of the uterus okay so the same example i would like to draw here so this is a female uterus normal endometrial lining is some millimeter in thickness so you should know how many millimeter normal endometrial lining ka thickness is that much millimeter right 
now sometimes the female is given estrogen tablets from outside external estrogen tablets for the treating some other disease kuch aur disease treat karne ke liye we are giving external estrogen tablets to this female or we are giving ocps or some external estrogen um, tablets to this hormonal therapy to this female to treat some other disease now the estrogen is a stress the estrogen is acting as a stress it is not natural estrogen it is the artificial estrogen which we are giving so as a response to this the endometrium in the female undergo hyperplasia it will show cell division cell division increase in number increase in number increase in number and the endometrial lining become very very thick now see how many millimeter it is so of course it is more it is normal and it is hyperplasia so the the female will have a complaint of heavy bleeding very heavy bleeding during menstruation or between two menstrual cycle also she will have heavy bleeding yahan pe bleeding is normal it is not heavy it is normal bleeding so normal females have normal bleeding but this female have heavy bleeding so this female will go to the gynecologist and say doctor i am having very heavy bleeding this month or last few months of the menstrual cycle my bleeding is extremely heavy i am bleeding a lot or between two menstrual cycle also i am bleeding a lot that is the complaint now we will do the sonography ultrasonography of this female and we will find out that the endometrial matrium of this female is thickened as compared to normal thickness so this female is having a disease the name of the disease is endometrial hyperplasia what is the name of the disease it is known as endometrial hyperplasia it is pathological it is not physiological it is pathological so same diagram is given in here also you can see so this is normal endometrium see it is the uterine cavity you can see the thickness here normal endometrium and if you give the external estrogen see the thickness here see the thickness here so it is thickened 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 i guess it is thickened give me a thumbs up if you got it give me a thumbs up so that is endometrial hyperplasia what is the stress the stress is estrogen axis that is the stress the estrogen axis and the third one was was what dhananjay was saying that is compensatory hyperplasia he was talking about compensatory hyperplasia that is after partial resection now imagine a person imagine a person he is a person he is having cirrhosis the liver is dead the liver is completely cirrhotic or he is having hepatic tumor the liver tumor he require liver so he is a recipient so there is a donor in the family the wife is the donor the father mother is the donor or children is the donor so some donor is there someone is the donor he want to give liver to this person now entire liver is not taken so this is the liver of the donor what actually we will do we will take a part of this liver part of this liver and give it give to the recipient so that both the persons can survive so a part of the liver is given here so we have done the partial resection here we have done so whatever the remaining liver is there this is the remaining liver in the donor i am not talking about recipient i am talking about donor see the liver of the donor let me take another diagram take the liver so normal liver me say i have done the partial resection in the donor now this is the surviving liver of the donor so the donor liver will do the hyperplasia increase in number cell division and again become normal size after few years after few years it become again normal size size not normal exactly but near or less it is normal so the partially resected is again regenerated that is partial resection give me a thumbs up same can happen with kidney also let me draw a human a rough sketch diagram of a human imagine a person one of the kidney is removed because of the tumor in the kidney some disease in the kidney you all know that humans have two kidney i guess everyone knows that so human have a pair of kidney if i remove one of the kidney what will happen let me remove i'm removing one of the kidney because the patient is having some disease in the kidney that's why the kidney is removed just a second yeah this kidney is removed so what will happen the other kidney will show hyperplasia the remaining and it will increase in size to do the compensation of other kidney so that can happen so give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so that is known as compensatory hyperplasia to compensate the organ is the organ is doing um, the hyperplasia what is the stress here the stress here is the resection resection you are resecting partial liver you are resecting one of the kidney so that is so regeneration of the liver after partial resection regeneration of the nephrect after nephrectomy there is hyperplasia of the other kidney other kidney is showing hyperplasia give me a thumbs up so these are the three examples of pathological hyperplasia what uh, tip is asking uh, is the warts caused by the hormones of pregnancy uh, no tip the warts is caused by human papilloma virus that's it human papilloma virus in benign lesion the human papilloma virus causes the skin warts 
skin warts and also the warts in the genital area and in malignancy it causes genital cancers also in malignancy give me a thumbs up if you got it give me a thumbs up so i have finished hyperplasia you can see this is partial hepatectomy but what i was telling you if someone have donated half of the liver a part of the liver so the surviving liver the surviving liver will do hyperplasia to regenerate the remaining part again give me a thumbs up <coughs> give me a thumbs up so that is a thing so increase in number increase in number increase so morphological change it is increase in number because of increase in number of the cell enlargement of the organ and increased mitosis that is morphological change so we are done with the first thing that is hyperplasia who will help me in revising it so what uh, vijraj is asking what about bone marrow in hemolytic anemia okay vijraj uh, a good question you have asked you can say the bone marrow in hemolytic anemia is an example of hyperplasia you can keep it in pathological hyperplasia in pathological hyperplasia so in hemolytic anemia so what is actually happening let me draw a diagram so yes very good vijraj so this is the bone marrow and this is the blood vessel of a human so in the bone marrow the rbcs are formed from hematopoietic stem cells rbc wbc platelet everything is formed and these rbcs are coming in the blood after forming in the bone marrow but in hemolytic anemia in hemolytic anemia what is actually happening the rbcs are killed in the blood vessel the rbc are killed by various agents by antibody by toxins these are killed so the person have less rbc to compensate it the hematopoietic stem cells here will do hyperplasia 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 they will divide and they will form more and more and more rbcs but these rbcs are immature they are reticulocyte and they will come in the blood that's why in hemolytic anemia Yeah, I hope it is working now. Uh, give me a thumbs up if I am clearly visible audible now. Give me a thumbs up in the chat box if I am clearly visible audible now. So I was teaching you hyperplasia, right? So I was teaching you hyperplasia. So we have done the definition, diagram, mechanism. What are the two types of hyperplasia? Can anyone tell me what are the two types of hyperplasia? It is physiological and pathological. We have seen three examples of physiological and we have seen three or four examples of pathological you can say. So can someone enumerate the example? In physiological hyperplasia, we have seen the female breast during puberty, pregnancy and lactation. We have seen the uterus in during pregnancy. That is an example of both hypertrophy and hyperplasia. And we have seen the endometrium of the uterus during menstruation. In pathological, we have seen the warts the skin bars, the stress is the HPV. We have seen, uh, we have seen the endometrial hyperplasia. The stress is the external estrogen, right? And we have seen the compensatory, compensatory hyperplasia. The stress is the resection of the organ, the partial resection of the organ. And we have seen the bone marrow during hemolytic anemia. The stress here is the less number of RBC in the blood vessel. Give me a thumbs up. Have you got it? So we are done with hyperplasia. Let me start the second one, hypertrophy. Let me start the second one that is hypertrophy. Are you people there? Can I start with hypertrophy? So the second type uh, of adaptation is hypertrophy. We have done with hyperplasia. I am coming on hypertrophy. So what is hypertrophy? What is hypertrophy? Hyper means more and trophy means size. So it is increase in size not number. It is increase in size but not the number. Say the negative finding also. So you tell me I have told you three type of cells. What are the three type of cells? I have told you labile cells, stable cells and terminal, permanent or terminal cells. So I have told you these three type of cells. The first type of adaptation that is hyperplasia is shown by these two only. A terminal or permanent cell cannot show hyperplasia because it cannot divide. But what about hypertrophy? Hypertrophy can be shown by which type of cell? I am asking to you. You have to answer this question. I am asking about hypertrophy. Which type of cell will show hypertrophy out of the three? Which will show, which will not show? I am asking about hypertrophy. About hyperplasia, you told me already. Now tell me about the hypertrophy. So all the cells. Yes, you are right that all types of cells will show hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is increase in size. Size can be increased in all. But number cannot be increased in all. Number sirf usme par sakta hai, that can show the cell division. Right? So all can show. Yes, all type of cells. So whether it is labile, stable or permanent, all can show the hypertrophy that is increase in size. So, okay. What I mean here to say labile and stable cells can show hyperplasia also hypertrophy also as a part of adaptation 
they have two options they can do they can do hyperplasia also they can show hypertrophy also but permanent or terminal cells they can show only hypertrophy as a part of adaptation and response to stress they cannot show hyperplasia am i right priyanshi ibirami dhananjay am i right am i right okay the terminal or permanent cells are the heart cells heart cells and the brain cells yes so in the heart have you heard a term left ventricular hypertrophy what is the full form of lvh what is the full form of rvh right ventricular hypertrophy right ventricular or left ventricular it is hypertrophy have you heard the term left ventricular hyperplasia no you have not heard have you heard the term right ventricular hyperplasia you have not why have you ever thought it is a viva question ki why left ventricular hypertrophy occurs but why left ventricular hyperplasia do not occur why right ventricular hypertrophy occurs but why right ventricular hyperplasia do not occur why why the answer the simple answer to this question is that left ventricular or right ventricular cells are the heart cells heart cells are permanent cells they are terminal cells they cannot divide they can increase in size that's why showing hypertrophy but they cannot divide that's why they cannot show hyperplasia so we have left ventricular hypertrophy but not left ventricular hyperplasia that is the answer yes priyanshi yes have you got it so that is written here you can read it so it is increase in size not the number so it is the only adaptation which is shown by terminal cell or permanent cell terminal cell permanent cell can only show hypertrophy not hyperplasia see the diagram this is a normal cell everyone see this is a normal cell whenever stress is acting on this cell the stress is acting the cell is responding by increase in size please appreciate the increase in size here see the number here one cell here also one cell so number is same but the size is increased so that's why it is hypertrophy give me a thumbs up what is the mechanism what is the mechanism how does the, the, the this cell is increasing in size now it is not the swelling which is causing increase in size no it is a very important mcq swelling do not cause increase in size most of the student think that ma'am this cell is swelled up it absorb water it swelled up that's why increase in size no swelling is not the answer then what is the answer what is the answer why it is increasing in size now cell have cell organelles inside it so there is a nucleus there is endoplasmic reticulum there is mitochondria there is ribosomes there are many many cell organelles all these cell organelles will increase they will increase so instead of one mitochondria we have 100 mitochondria instead of one endoplasmic reticulum we have 100 so the cell organelles number is increased that's why we have many mitochondria we have many endoplasmic reticulum we have many ribosomes that's why cell is increasing in in size not due to the swelling have you got it it is a very important mcq so increase in size is not due to swelling please mind it it is not not due to swelling it is due to more structural component and cellular proteins inside the cell by structural components i mean mitochondria ribosomes endoplasmic reticulum all that give me a thumbs up that is the mechanism now coming on the types as usual yes very good vijraj coming on the types there are two types of hypertrophy as usual the physiological one the pathological one so give me only one example of physiological hypertrophy i have already told you there is only one example of physiological hypertrophy who will tell me i have already told you i have already told you the one example of physiological hypertrophy who will tell me yes it is the pregnant uterus uterus during pregnancy uterus during pregnancy the myometrium of the uterus during pregnancy very good it is an example of physiological uh, hyperplasia as well as hypertrophy so it is coming in both example what about pathological in which we are having three example so i will tell you pathological now see the physiological physiological hypertrophy may we have only one example uterus during pregnancy so the same diagram can you see this is a normal uterus non pregnant and this one is a pregnant uterus see the change in size now if you make the diagram you can see the same diagram you can see the two diagrams this is diagram of normal uterus and this is the diagram of pregnant uterus appreciate the cell see the cell size here and see the cell size here can you see the cell size here so it is increase in size not only in increase in size if you count the total number of cells here and count the total number of cells here it is increasing in number also so the pregnant uterus is an example of hyperplasia as well as, as, well as hypertrophy breast uh, no vijraj i will not go with breast breast is basically an example of hyperplasia not hypertrophy i would not like to quote the example of breast here i would like to quote the example of uterus only not breast have you got it vijraj vijraj basically breast may it is hyperplasia which is causing increase in size during puberty pregnancy and lactation not the hypertrophy it is hyperplasia give me a thumbs up vijraj you got it so that is only one example here i would like to quote in physiological hypertrophy is pregnant uterus 
Now I am coming on pathological hypertrophy. You can see here, this one is pathological hypertrophy. Pathological hypertrophy. Here I will tell you three examples. Have you heard there are three types of muscles in human body? What are the three types of muscles in human body? Please tell me. So it is heart muscles, the cardiac muscles. Cardiac muscles or heart muscles. The second is the skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle. And the third is the smooth muscle. All three muscles are the examples of pathological hypertrophy. Yes, pathological hypertrophy. So I will tell you three diseases. One by one. So one disease I will tell you in cardiac muscle. One I will tell you in skeletal muscle. One I will tell you in smooth muscle. So the three diseases will lead to the three type of pathological hypertrophy. So I will give you three examples here. Let me start with cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle. So for this I have to show the diagram of a heart. You know that heart, the four chambers of the heart is visible in front of you. So the four chambers, right auricle, right ventricle, left auricle, left ventricle and the blood vessels you can see all around. Right, the blood vessels you can see all around. You can see the complete circle where the blood is going. You already know I am not repeating it. Imagine a situation, what wall is present here? This, this is aorta. This is left ventricle. From left ventricle, aorta is coming out. Can you see aorta is coming out? And during the systole, it is giving blood to all the organs. All the organs are receiving blood from aorta when the left ventricle is pumping. Right? Imagine a disease. The name of the disease is aortic stenosis. The name of the disease is aortic stenosis. There is an aortic wall. It is undergoing stenosis. Either aortic stenosis or bicuspid aortic wall. The aortic wall is bicuspid. That is a disease. That is the name of a pathology, a disease, during which the wall is thickened, the leaflets of the aortic wall thickened. So what will happen now? What will happen now? You will say, ma'am, now when the left ventricle will do the systole, when the left ventricle is contracting, it is doing the systole, blood is not going in the aorta or less blood is going in the aorta, normal blood is not going in the aorta. So it is acting as a stress. Now it is acting as a stress, left ventricle cannot eject the blood into the aorta. So it is a stress for the left ventricle. So what will happen? What will happen now? Let me draw the myometrium here. These are the cells of the myometrium in the left ventricle. These are the myometrial cells. So what they will do? They want to do more forceful ejection because the blood is not going in the aorta now. So they want to do more forceful ejection. So all the cells here, they will increase in size. The cells of the left ventricle, the myometrial cells, they will increase in size. So overall thickness of the wall will increase. So that it will do a more forceful ejection during systole. So that more and more blood can go. Have you got it? So that is the thing. So see, if I cut this heart from here and look from above, what I will find? I will find this is, there are two cavities, the two ventricles. This is a cavity of right ventricle. This is a cavity of left ventricle. Now see the wall. Who will see the wall? See the wall here. See the wall of the right ventricle, the thickness of the wall. And see the wall of the left ventricle. Please appreciate the thickness of the wall of the left ventricle. The wall of the left ventricle is thickened because the cells here, the cells here, they undergo hypertrophy. They increase in size so that it can do a more forceful ejection. This is a diagram from Robbins. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. So that is the example of heart muscle. Heart muscle. Let me come on the second smooth muscle. First, give me an example of heart. What is the disease? It is aortic wall disease. Either aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation, uh, aortic uh, uh, bicuspid aortic wall. So in them, the stress, the stress is the more blood in the left ventricle which cannot be ejected, which cannot be ejected ahead. Have you got it? Let me talk about smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, may I will give you two examples. Okay? Can you see? Okay, I will draw. I will draw it for you. Uh, this is the esophagus. This is the stomach, and this is the duodenum. This is the duodenum. This is esophagus, this is stomach, this is duodenum. You can see it. Now, humans have, there are two sphincter here and there is one sphincter here. This sphincter is known as lower esophagus sphincter and this sphincter is known as pyloric sphincter. We have two sphincters here, right? Normally, when food is coming, let me draw the food. This is the food. If I am eating some food, it is going in the mouth, I am chewing it and swallowing it. So, food is going in the esophagus. When the food goes in the esophagus, the, this sphincter open. So that it allows the passage of the food in the stomach. And when food reach here, this sphincter, pyloric sphincter open. So that it allows the passage of the food in the duodenum and in the intestine. So this occurs normally. This occurs normally. Now imagine a disease, a situation when LES is not opening. LES cannot open. Imagine a situation when this is not opening. It is unable to open. It is not opening. The name of the disease is achalasia. Achalasia. It is known as cardiac achalasia. Now, cardiac is a misnomer. It is nothing to do with the heart. Cardiac, this, this is the cardiac portion of the stomach. 
स्टमक में जो कार्डिया पोर्शन है उसका एक ग्लेशियर गिव मी थम्स अप This is the name of the disease. So what will happen? You yourself tell what will happen. The food cannot go from esophagus to stomach. The food is stuck here, so it is acting as a stress for esophagus. The esophagus is getting stress. That is, food is accumulated here. It cannot go. So the esophagus, the wall of the esophagus, the smooth muscles in the wall of the esophagus, the cells in the wall of the esophagus, they will undergo hypertrophy. They will increase in size, so that the muscle thickness can be increased and it can do a forceful peristalsis. to eject the blood to propel to not blood food to eject or propel the food into the stomach because the uh, food is accumulated here because of doing strong peristalsis the esophagus want to propel the food ahead have you got it so the wall of the esophagus is thickened because of hypertrophy in case of cardiac achalasia in a patient with cardiac achalasia if you take the esophagus out and see the wall it is thickened the thickness is due to hyperplasia hypertrophy it is not hyperplasia Give me a thumbs up. The second, this same example you can quote here. If this finger is not opening, the name of the disease is pyloric, um, pyloric uh, stenosis. It is not opening. The name of the disease is pyloric stenosis. The pyloric finger is stenosed. It is not opening. So what will happen now? The food is accumulated here in the stomach. It cannot be passed in the into the duodenum. So it, it is acting as a stress for the stomach now. now the wall of the stomach will undergo hypertrophy to do the forceful to do the forceful uh, this thing uh, propulsion or forceful peristalsis so there are two examples cardiac achalasia in which the wall of the esophagus will become thickened and pyloric stenosis in which the wall of the stomach will get thickened give me a thumbs up i tried best i tried hard so that is the two examples here you can see this is cardiac achalasia appreciate the sphincter here it is open can you see a passage appreciate this finger here it is closed there is no passage now see the thickness of the wall here in the of the esophagus and see the thickness of the wall here the wall of the esophagus is getting thickened by doing hyper hypertrophy the same here you can see pyloric stenosis see this finger it is closed so please appreciate the wall thickness here of the stomach it is undergoing thickened give me a thumbs up the examples are simple but you have to understand it last type of muscle is skeletal muscle skeletal muscle actually this is not pathological the third one is the example of physiological so during gymming do you do gymming usually boys girls they do gymming why why the person is doing gymming to make the biceps and triceps you want to make your biceps and triceps more and more thick the deltoid more thick you want to make the abs right that's why the person is doing gymming why have you ever thought why the size is increasing what's the reason why the size of this muscle is increasing by doing more and more exercise or laborious work why it is increasing it is due to hypertrophy the answer is hypertrophy so count the number of cells here count the number of cells normally so exercise here is acting as a stress due to exercise the number of the cells will increase in size not in number the number of cells will increase in size so overall skeletal muscle will increase in size give me a thumbs up so it is not a disease you can put this example under physiological also uh, it is not pathological give me a thumbs up if you got it so skeletal muscle in athletes and in manual laborer during gymming it can increase the skeletal muscle ki hypertrophy ho jayegi everyone give me a thumbs up i am done i am done with hypertrophy also let me summarize yeah morphological changes okay so we are done with hyperplasia we are done with hypertrophy who will help me in revising the two who will help me in revising the two the hyperplasia and hypertrophy so hyperplasia is increase in number hypertrophy is increase in size give me a thumbs up it is number it is size diagram you know here it is a cell if on giving stress it is increasing in number here there is a cell on giving stress it is increasing in size so you have to know the diagram right mechanism the best is the mechanism you have to learn the mechanism of both jispe bahut mcq aata hai here number increases due to increase in growth factor and growth receptor increase in growth factor increasing growth receptor that is the mechanism here mechanism is not swelling please learn the negative finding it is not swelling it is due to increase of structural structural components or increase of the cell organelles that is the mechanism give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up if i come on the types both have two two types physiological pathological physiological pathological i am not repeating the examples it will take time but you know the examples if you quote there are three examples here or three or four examples here there is only one example here and three examples here So you have to say all the examples. Count the number of examples. One example which I want to quote here is the common one. 
so uterus pregnancy uterus pregnancy is an example of physiological hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia do you have any doubt in this i guess no one is having any doubt i want thumbs up from all should i come on the third atrophy the third adaptation atrophy are you people ready for that so let me come on the third adaptation that is atrophy so who will tell me the meaning of a a means less and trophy means size so it is decrease in number and size it is decrease in number that is cell shrinkage in short short you can say it is cell shrinkage shrinkage the cell shrinking that is the definition of atrophy ab cell kitna shrink hoga see the diagram can you see this is a normal cell this one is a normal cell see the size if stress is acting on it in in response to adopt the stress the cell is decreasing in size so that is decrease in size that is atrophy have you got it till what point it will decrease in size kitna chhota hoga till what point it will decrease in size itna chhota hoga ki cell is still viable itna chhota nahi ho jayega ki cell is dead by decreasing in size decreasing in size you are decreasing the organelles whenever you are having 10 mitochondria here you are reducing it to 5 or you are reducing it to only 2 mitochondria here you are having 100 endoplasmic reticulum here you are having only 10 so minimum number just the cell, cell can survive उतना उतना कर देगा बाय रिड्यूसिंग द सेल ऑर्गेनल्स यहाँ पे मेकेनिज्म इज रिडक्शन इन सेल ऑर्गेनल्स द सेल ऑर्गेनल्स आर रिड्यूस्ड इन नंबर राइट माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया इज रिड्यूस्ड एंडोप्लाज्मिक रेटिकुलम इज रिड्यूस्ड राइबोसोम इज रिड्यूस्ड सो व्हाट एवर दे आर प्रेजेंट नॉर्मली दे आर रिड्यूस्ड टू सच अ नंबर सो दैट सेल इज स्टिल वायबल द वर्ड हियर टू बी पिक्ड अप इज स्टिल वायबल अभी भी वायबल है अभी भी वायबल है राइट सो सेल इज स्टिल वायबल या वन मोर थिंग आई वांट टू यस प्रियांशी इट इज नॉट ओनली डिक्रीज इन साइज it is also decrease in number you can say atrophy is both decrease in size as well as number that is the definition of atrophy but the cell is still viable give me a thumbs up on the word cell is still viable so that is the thing what is the mechanism i have already told you the mechanism it is reduction in cell organelle due to reduction in cell organelle what are the cell organelles mitochondria myofilaments endoplasmic reticulum you are reducing it so that cell is reducing in the size give me a thumbs up again it is of two type physiological and pathological give me six examples One, two, three, four, five, six of the physiological and six examples of the pathological. One, two, three, four, five, six. Who will give me six, six examples of physiological, pathological? Fata fat. The time is limiting. Tell me fast. The time is limiting. The six example of physiological and six examples of pathological. Who will tell me? Let me start with physiological. The six examples of physiological atrophy in human body. Number one, lymphoid tissue. Whenever a child is there, in child the lymph nodes are prominent. The lymphoid tissue is very prominent. But during adult adult stage or old stage the lymphatics regress in size normally it is not a disease with aging it occurs with aging now if you see the lymph node of a child and lymph node of yourself or lymph node of your parents you will see with aging it is regressing in size size because of the atrophy thymus thymus during embryonal stage we have thymus but during adulthood the thymus disappear so thymus is disappearing we know it so it is due to atrophy of the thymus thymus you know gonads means ovary female size ovary after menopause that is that occurs at 45 to 50 years of age that is stoppage of the menstruation the ovaries shrink in size so ovaries shrink in size after menopause right so that is due to physiological atrophy okay uterus okay okay i will come on the uterus leave it mai aati hu us pe brain with aging you see this diagram can you see this diagram this is a brain of a young person and this is a brain of a old person this is young person and this is old person can you see the size of the brain now there is gyri and sulci this one is gyri the elevation is the gyri and the depression is sulci you know na so you see the gyri and sulci these are the gyri and see the sulci gyri and sulci here and see the gyri and sulci here so gyri become more prominent and sulci become more depressed more depressed why because of atrophy brain atrophy in old age the brain got atrophy the brain got atrophied this is a diagram from robbins it is a mcq in aims image based question so what the diagram is showing that is a uh, deepening of the sulci and more prominent gyri because of brain atrophy so this is a example of brain atrophy with aging aging ke sath brain got atrophied give me a thumbs up the last with aging the bones bones are uh, loose calcium so bones will become thick and uh, thin and thin just a second so this is a normal bone with age it will lose calcium it will lose calcium it will become thin thin and thin that that, that is known as osteoporosis osteoporosis occurs with aging so these are not diseases these are normal uterus mai bata rahi thi listen the uterus okay 
so this is the normal uterus the size of the normal uterus see here now during pregnancy it increases in size due to accommodate the fetus but what of, about after pregnancy after pregnancy it again decreases in size this is known as parturition listen what i mean to say here so what is the mechanism here so this one is pregnancy and this one is parturition parturition takes place for 42 days after delivery 42 days after delivery the uterus size again become back to normal so what are the mechanisms here who will tell me the mechanism for pregnancy two mechanisms are responsible hypertrophy and hyperplasia because of both the size is increasing but what is causing decrease in size after delivery that is during parturition it is atrophy it is atrophy so uterus is coming in all examples uterus is an example of hypertrophy also hyperplasia also during pregnancy but during parturition it is an example of atrophy give me a thumbs up everyone i cannot super simplify than this please give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up you got it so uterus so uterus after parturition after delivery that is decreasing in size have you got it so that is the six examples of physiological atrophy lymphoid tissue with aging thymus with aging ovaries after menopause uterus after delivery brain with aging and bony trabeculae with aging osteoporosis so these are the six examples of physiological atrophy now i'm coming on pathological atrophy a little bit faster so coming on pathological atrophy see see if a person is not eating starvation means not eating anything for a long time so all the organs in the body they undergo atrophy all the organs so person become lean thin and all this is known as cachexia cachexia this is known as cachexia it usually occurs in cancer patient or very ill patient who cannot eat at all they cannot eat so cachexia occurs that is atrophy of throughout the body not only of one organ throughout the body the person is having atrophy it is known as starvation atrophy the first one starvation starvation atrophy it is occurring due to not eating the person is not eating so it is seen in cancer and severely ill person give me a thumbs up so it is starvation starvation thumbs up dete jao har point pe fatafat the second you know all body organs are getting blood see the two kidneys see this is aorta this is aorta this is the renal artery of this kidney this is the renal artery of this kidney see this renal artery it is showing atherosclerosis can you see the blood is obstructed so this kidney is getting less blood it is getting normal blood this one and this one is getting less blood since it is getting less blood see the size of the two kidney it decreases in size it is undergoing atrophy so atrophy is due to ischemia that's why it is known as ischemic atrophy give me a thumbs up the best is renal artery stenosis the best example you can quote here so second is this ischemic atrophy which occurs due to atherosclerosis of the renal atrophy renal artery right the same thing can happen if brain artery is atrophied cerebral artery so brain undergo atrophy uh, it if it undergo stenosis give me a thumbs up that is ischemia it is the first one was starvation the second is ischemia the third one you know all organs get nerves nerves all organs get nerves so these are the legs of a patient with polio you know polio in polio the nerves are damaged the nerves of the muscles are damaged there is no muscle damage the nerves to the muscle are damaged by a virus polio virus polio virus is damaging the nerves right so since the nerves are damaged so that organ undergo atrophy kyunki uske paas nerve nahi hai the organ do not have nerve so here the skeletal muscles of the thigh of the leg of the arms they do not have nerve that's why they undergo atrophy this type of atrophy is known as neuropathic it is due to absence of nerves neuropathic give me a thumbs up so the first one was starvation the second one was ischemic it is due to less blood the third one is the neuropathic it is due to disease nerve the nerve is absent the fourth one the fourth one kya hai let me see fourth one is disuse atrophy you know the meaning of disuse just suppose i have a fracture here in the humerus in the humerus what will happen the doctor will put a cast here the past cast here you know i will have a cast for one month two months after one or two months if i open the cast and if i see the two arms this arm is thinner as compared to this because i have not used it for two three months the use is absence if you don't use any organ for a long time the organ undergo atrophy so that is known as disuse atrophy the best example is limb under cast if you are putting cast over any limb so starvation is due to decrease food ischemia is due to decrease blood neuropathic is due to decrease nerve and disuse is due to decrease use give me a thumbs up you know example here example is cachexia here example is renal artery stenosis here example is polio and here the example is cast under limb fracture everyone give me a thumbs up char ho gaye come in on the next two the fifth one is the endocrine atrophy endocrine what do you mean by endocrine atrophy you know there is a excess this is hypothalamus 
this is pituitary and these are the four peripheral organs these are the four peripheral organs hypothalamus the hormones are coming to the pituitary from pituitary acth comes to adrenal gland tsh comes to thyroid and fsh lh come to the gonads that is ovaries in females and testes in males you know these four organs receive hormone from the pituitary imagine a situation when pituitary is damaged pituitary is absent pituitary is hypopituitarism it is absent or damaged what will happen acth tsh lsh fsh all will be absent so adrenal gland will shrink in size thyroid will shrink in size and ovaries and testes in male female also shrink in size so all these organs are shrinking in size because they are not getting hormones so it is known as endocrine atrophy because of absence of hormone they are shrinking in size the best example is hypopituitarism at that i have told you that is pituitary is absent so it is leading to atrophy of thyroid adrenal and gonads and last one is pressure atrophy if some part is putting pressure can you see here meningioma is there this meningioma is putting pressure over the skull bone so skull bone is undergoing atrophy due to pressure so i have given you the six examples of physiological and six pathological so the link is expiring i have to stop here after 5 minutes i am having a plus lecture so i cannot continue with these two but don't worry i will continue these two in a, in my afternoon lecture again in the afternoon i am having a lecture at 3 o'clock on youtube only on this channel only that is a free lecture that is cell injury so i will finish this and start with the cell injury in the afternoon thank you very much for being with me i am ending this lecture there are few announcements for you people let me do the announcements and then you can go thank you very much uh, i really enjoy teaching you same from your side also an academy is launching previous year question bank on 23rd of the march it is already launched i guess and the previous year neat pg exam neat pg nicet fmg past three year question banks are there you can do your practice from there right uh, an academy is launching auto daily practice papers right a quick practice paper after the plus class there will be 5 to 10 mcqs depending on that class so you can do the practice after the class right this is neat pg pre calendar test for the march i request all the student to participate in this test okay this is already done on an academy we are having two subscriptions the plus and the iconic in plus subscription you will get access to an academy only in iconic along with an academy you will get preparatory access also right once you take the subscription you will be eligible for all these batches by the top most educators of the india we work as a team uh, to give you knowledge here right what you have to do uh, you have to install an academy learners app from the play store an academy learner app from the play store after installing select the goal as neat pg select the goal after that search for my name my name is dr priyanka sachdev please search my name you will find my name there is a profile link given with my name please follow my profile link once you follow my profile link you can see there are more than 500 free recordings available in the form of the special classes all the classes are free you can watch any recording along with the notes the only thing you require a code the code is sachdev10 that is my surname s a c h d e v sachdev10 is the code please use this code to unlock any of the free recording on an academy please i am repeating the code the code is same it is sachdev10 s a c h d e v use this code to unlock any any recording on an academy for free for free so distribute it on your batch groups everyone thank you very much and this is the uh you know details of the plus subscription plus subscription the various plans iconic the various plans the light subscription there are three type of subscription you can see the minimum is two month plan maximum is four year see the prices of various plan you can see the prices of various plans you can see longer the plan cheaper it is so i suggest you if you are taking a subscription please go with a longer plan on all these the best part is that if you use my same code sachdev10 here also before payment you will get straight forward 10% discount so don't forget the code sachdev10 it is used for free classes also and for subscription also thank you very much see you all in my next class uh, on youtube in the afternoon bye bye study hard